Hello, welcome ukuleleists and ukulele teachers. I am John from John's Ukulele Cafe. This video is for ukulele teachers or those that would like to get to know the ukulele neck better. These videos and posts will be part of a content segment of mine called The Teacher's Lounge, where we will talk music pedagogy. And if you're unfamiliar with the word pedagogy, all that means is the art or profession of teaching. So today's video will be about the song Do Re Mi, my ukulele neck floor chart, and Eurythmics. You can find the script of today's video on our studio website, allnutsformusic.com, under the blog section. Also make sure to post pictures from today's video on there as well. Starting with this video, I'll begin to feature more songs that I use in my own ukulele teaching. And Do Re Mi is definitely one of those songs. In conjunction with this song, if you teach music and have enough floor space, you should try to create a ukulele neck on your floor. Do Re Mi is an awesome song to get students more comfortable with learning the ukulele notes, scales, as well as introducing solfege. And I'll show you how you can use it in this video. How you can make a ukulele neck on the floor easily is by having one foot by one foot tiles. One foot by one foot tiles are the easiest way to get started. Firstly, I ordered two rolls of orange duct tape on Amazon, and I chose orange because it kind of went with the green tiles that I had in my room, and so that it would stand out and would be easy to see in the peripheral area of my student's vision. In total, to get an octave on the floor, you'll need about a floor space of about 14 feet by five feet. I centered the tape directly in the middle of two squares when placing it on the floor, and you'll need about this much floor space so you can stand where the nut would be if representing the open notes on the ukulele. So we aren't always gonna be standing on the strings or in the squares, but you wanna be able to stand off of it a little bit too to represent those open strings. You can also put some round stickers on your floor diagram too to help represent the fret dots on your ukulele. One other cool thing too is that if you teach any bass or ukulele bass, this will work great for that too if you're using a four string bass. Okay, so this is the song for students or anyone who is learning solfege, in my opinion. It just is a really nice way to introduce the syllables and have some lyrical imagery to go with each one of those syllables. And of course, this song is from The Sound of Music, written by Rogers and Hammerstein and was originally recorded in the key of B-flat for Julie Andrews. But most teachers begin teaching this song in the key of C, especially those who teach fixed do solfege. I recommend teaching the song in the key of C if possible, especially if you're using C tuning on ukulele. Thankfully, the song is written in the key of C in the daily ukulele book. Yay! Hammerstein did an amazing job with the lyrics making it super easy to remember the solfege syllables with a lyrical imagery to support each syllable, as I said earlier. So let's get an example here. Do, a deer. Re, a drop of golden sun. Me, a name I call myself. Fa, a long, long way to run. So you can hear the sun and the run rhyming there. A good way to remember the rhyming scheme is that the lines of words are generally organized by A, B, A, B rhyming couplets. So I generally use this song with students aged five through 12. I myself am pretty new to using solfege, but in college I use the number system. But I was exposed to solfege during a Eurythmics course I had over this past summer. I found that solfege really helps students with music, reading, and introducing singing with vowel sounds. If you're more interested in Eurythmics, check out the American Eurythmic Society, and I believe that's AmericanEurythmicSociety.org. This summer they are having a seminar or a conference in Ohio, so go ahead and check that out, and I can tell you I've never had more fun with music, almost ever as when uh, we're at the, one of those conferences and using those with students as well for understanding. So I use the song Do Re Mi in conjunction with the ukulele floor diagram to familiarize students with solfege and to get to know the musical scales on the ukulele neck away from the instrument first. Students get to explore the ukulele neck 
in a very tactile way, even before picking up the instrument. I would describe this process as someone walking a trail in the forest and taking pictures or notes of what they see along the way. There is a quote from the Canadian teacher, Peter Luongo that is, play notes on the ukulele neck vertically for speed, but play them horizontally for understanding. I have students learn scales horizontally first and then have them learn where the strings overlap later to get their scales faster. When I use the floor chart at first, I have the students jump inside of the squares and not on the strings because their targets are larger than those on the strings. And also kids just know how to hopscotch pretty well coming into lessons. It's something they've done on the playground. I usually walk them through the spaces we'll be jumping in first without the song while saying the syllables, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, right? Having stickers on the floor where the fret markers go can help make the terrain more recognizable. I also explained that most of the jumps they'll make will be two squares away, like a whole step, except for those following the syllables mi and ti, which after those, they are half steps. And that is something else I learned just by moving on the floor chart by myself. That is learning by doing or moving through the space. After students are more comfortable with moving in this way, I have them stand in any exact place on the C string where they would be for this song and right behind the frets. We will walk and hop along on that string. After that, I have them only play the notes on the ukulele neck while standing in place. So just standing still, playing the scale up the neck. Finally, I challenge them to play the notes on the neck and hop to those notes on the floor at the same time for understanding. At first, they generally have a hard time, but it's a lot of fun and they end up laughing a lot. So once the students have more of an understanding of the notes on the other strings, I will have them play the vertical version of the neck instead of the horizontal one. Some further activities you can do with the floor is to try out other scales. G scale, especially if you're using a low G string, F scale, A minor, etc. I also have the students say solfege syllables on those scales as well. If you have a group class and you need to have two students on the ukulele neck at the same time, you could have them face each other on their respective C strings. So it's going to look like from one vantage point they're on a C string and from the other vantage point they're also on a C string and they can pass by each other that way. Another activity you could do would be to call out specific notes on the ukulele neck and have the students find those notes. So I could say in the first three frets I want you to find the C notes and of course there are two C notes. Right? There's an open one and then there's the one on the third fret on the A string. If they're more intermediate and you want them to get to know all the notes on the ukulele, you could have them find all of those notes. So find all the C's on the ukulele neck, go. Uh, then you can have them find all the F's or all the G's. This could easily turn into a game where you have the students roll dice that have the note names on them, uh, as well as any sharps or flats you'd like to include. I have bought blank dice on Amazon before and I'll write with permanent marker the note names, and also sharps or flats. And later, if you need to wipe off those notes or the marker, you can just use rubbing alcohol and it works great. A hidden perk of this song is that it helps us teachers learn the harmonized major scale, a very handy tool to make music with your students as they learn their scales. One note, you're going to want to memorize the song if you're out on the floor with your students. You don't want to be looking over at your music and, and like, oh, I think I've got this. Because you're not going to be able to make sure that the students know what they're doing. And you just want to feel confident as you play it. So let's take a look at the chords in the song for a second. This song has chords that fit into a harmonized scale as you ascend up the scale. At least for the first half of the song. So we have the pitches C, D, E, and F. And the chords that go with those notes are C, G7, C, and F. And I think you're going to find most often in music that those chords go with those pitches very, very well. Especially if it's kind of a basic song. The second half, though, starting on So, are organized a little bit differently. 
And if you take a really close look, if you look at the, the pitches G, A, B, C, the chords that correspond with those are C, D7, E7, and then C, which most of those just go up by step, don't they? C, D, E. But there are some chords in between those, right? And um, the chords that are in between are gonna be F, G, etc. But a way you can remember, memorize those chords at the very end is that most of them go up like a dominant tonic motion. Five, one, five, one, five, one, right? Or two, five, one, however you want to memorize that. But the chords also aren't too hard to remember because they generally change shape just by one finger at a time. For instance, if you did, let's say, a G7 chord to an E7 chord, that's just really one finger different, isn't it? You're going from the second string to the fourth string. Or A minor to C7, taking your middle finger to your pointer finger. Or F major to D minor. You're just adding your ring finger, right? In short, this is a great song to have in your memorized repertoire as a teacher, and something you can pull out at any time, especially for those students that like to move around. And if I'm honest, more than half of our students like to move around. Uh, they don't like to be in the chair the entire time, right? So lastly, I'd like to hear from you all. Are you a ukulele teacher? And if you are, how could you use the ukulele floor diagram in your lessons or group classes? I'd love to hear from you. Let's hear and see what this might look like if you were to do this in a class. Try it again and go. so much for tuning in to today's video. If you like this video, go ahead and hit like and subscribe to the channel below. I'm going to be featuring a lot more pedagogy videos in the future. For ukulele teachers, I feel like we need a lot more of that in the community. So have a great day and I'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.